Hello everyone, in this video I will tell you about the things that should be in the next update. There will be quite a lot of things coming so I don't expect them all in one update but I want these things to appear gradually because it will simply not be possible to add them all in one update. Prepare something tasty and I'll start. Ender update. I read various comments and under the post about the new update many asked for the ender update. And I agree with you. The end dimension was last updated in Combat Update 1.9 in 2016. Islands outside of Ender Dragon Island have been added in this update. Added a new dungeon, Elytra, a new mob, Shulker, and Horus. This made the players explore the world even after killing the Ender Dragon. But for seven years nothing has been added. And the end still remains a flying desert islands. There is nothing here but Endermen, Horus, and dungeons. That's all there is in this world. The first thing I would like to add is the new biomes. They would transform End's world and bring it to life. I also wish the fight with the dragon made more sense. It's silly to watch it fly towards the center for no reason after destroying the crystals. I think the structure of the center should be a source of pink liquid or something that damages the player like lava and slowly heals the dragon. This fountain is buried in the end stone, then the dragon goes there to dig and regenerate itself. YouTuber Impixel showed the idea for the new end update. The new dragon island looks really cool and also the new dragon looks really nice. It was also perhaps a cool idea to add a small dragon that will hatch from an egg and can be tamed. It was an analogue of the red dragon, which the Mojang once wanted to add, but later refused. There should be no water in the end when you cross the portal, it should be purple like in Minecraft dungeons. And water should not be harmful to endermen. I also wanted to see new mobs like in Minecraft dungeons. New endermens looks very nice, they will spawn after killing the ender dragon as well as the new boss Vengeful Heart of Ender, which will spawn in new structures. He will have several phases and the battle with him will be a test of all your skills, archery, sword, shield, building, potions. Speaking of new mobs, I would like to see new slimes, new type of skeletons, end stray. It can shoot with the new acid arrows and will spawn in separate biomes. Mob end whales will fly in the air and add to the atmosphere to the end. New golems that will guard new structures and end cities. Broken ships of the end, small dungeons should also be in the end. New ore, enderite. Ore should improve netherite armor, just as netherite improves diamond. Interface update. The Minecraft interface is sorely lacking some things. They can be a huge time saver and just a pleasure to use. Food shows how much it'll heal with icons and will show when it'll give you negative effects. Items that are in the shulker box can be viewed without leaving the inventory. This saves a lot of time. If you hover over a map in your inventory, it will show up immediately, and you won't need to open it manually. Enchanted books show which items they can be applied to. Furnace fuel shows how many items it can smelt. An icon that shows how many items you are holding in your hands. The status of the armour will be shown in a small icon at the bottom so you don't have to constantly check it in your inventory. The state of the elytra is also shown when you're flying. Armour and tools should show a small icon and a number how much armour adds to the amount of protection and how much damage tools can do and you will be able to compare other armour. Two new buttons needs to be in chests. Insert and extract. The insert button will put every item in your inventory inside the chest and the extract button will pull every item from the chest into your inventory. The inventory sorting button should appear in the inventory. I still don't understand why it's not there. We need a search bar in the chest where you can type and filter items in the chest by your query. Items that don't match will be darkened. You can also search for enchantment and potion names or wrap the search in quotes to match entire names. Pressing the bind key will show your entire inventory above your hotbar. You can then press 1, 2 or 3 to switch that respective inventory row with your hotbar. Pressing Shift plus T while looking at an item in an inventory links that item to chat, and other players can hover over it to check it out. 
When a tool breaks, it will be restocked by other items of the same type taken from your inventory. Pressing the rebendable key will toggle auto walk, and while in auto walk, auto jump is also enabled. Pressing F12 will open camera mode. In this new mode, you can take enhanced screenshots by using over 20 image filters and combining them with borders and overlays. In creative, you can pick up blocks from any distance. If you try to craft an item using the recipe book but don't have all necessary ingredients, you can right-click the created ghost items to instead bring up the recipe for that item. The item you were previously trying to craft will now be put in a crafting queue, which shows up above the crafting result. Upon crafting the current item, the previous item in the queue is loaded again. Adding sounds to the menu. Nature Update Ambient is one of the most important things that immerse you in the game world. We already have cool ambient in the nether, and it's time to add it to the overworld. In Minecraft should be added sounds such as birds singing in the forest, wind sounds, reworked rain sound, Cricket sounds at night. Water sounds and much more. Also in Nature Update, the forest should be updated. Tree variations need to be updated, and what Mojang was shown in concept art would fit perfectly. I would also like fallen trees like in Bedrock. I still do not understand why it's not added to Java. Iron blocks will rust in the rain. They can be waxed using honeycomb, preventing the block from rusting further and freezing it in the state of rust it is in. Uh, soot forms in thin layers on vertical surfaces above campfires, but is purely aesthetic and will not drop items. Weeds grow when your farmland hasn't been tended to for long periods of time. Over time, moss will grow on stone blocks when exposed to air and nearby water, including when rain touches these blocks. Humus generates on the ground in dark forest biomes, Ivy generates on tree trunks in forest biomes. Leaves blocks will have falling leaf particles. A bark item corresponding to the respective wood type will now be dropped whenever you strip a log with an axe. Also you can reapply their on wood log. Bark can also be used to craft wood blocks. Bark can be used to smelt a single item or used in a composter. Leaf piles form over time and fall when leaves blocks decay. Leaf piles can also be crafted using three of their respective leaves blocks in a row. With leaf piles, you can make a block, you can pass through it or hide in it. As well as the forest, the beach needs to be updated. The addition of a palm tree and a coconut would be a nice innovation. On the beaches, there can be such mobs as crab and seagull. And finally, the addition of birds to the game. They have not been added since the addition of a parrot. Perhaps they will not have great functionality, but they will greatly enliven the world of Minecraft and fit perfectly into this update. The mob that I have been waiting for a long time is jellyfish. It will live both in the oceans and in cave lakes. In the cave, they will be more white, and in the ocean, they will be different colours. Jellyfish can be taken with a bucket like a fish. Loot from them will be something like a piece of pearlescent nematocyst, which can be placed and it will emit light. You can also make a block from it. It will also emit light and will look like water, only it will not spill. Drops will drip from it because it is liquid. The mob that I have been waiting for a long time is the deer. There is a deer in almost all survival games, but it is not in Minecraft. But I don't want Mojangs to add mobs just for beauty. Like a polar bear, new mobs should have functionality, like deer skin if it is combined with threads and then fried, then it will be possible to make bundle, which Minecraft developers cannot add for about three years. Since we have a polar bear, I'm waiting for the bear, which will live in the forest. He will not pose a danger to the player, until player get very close to him. 
we were also shown the addition of fireflies in Minecraft Live 2021. Minecraft's community immediately warmly reacted to this mob. Fireflies. I fucking caught it! Yes! He's um, roaming around, adding a lot of ambient. Corey? Fireflies! Fireflies! Fireflies. Fireflies. Wow. Roaming around, adding a lot of ambient. That is swamp. so cool. Is Making it feel just nice and cozy just at night. But really, my favorite part of them is just making the world like, come to life. Guys, Minecraft, like, we could have done this oh, one in about oh, 20 oh, minutes. Oh, yeah. Oh, 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 they also added the ability for the frogs to eat these fireflies, but subsequently, people began to say that fireflies were poisoned for frogs and Mojang did not add fireflies to the game. A lot of species of fireflies and firebugs that are out there are poisonous to toads and frogs. And of course, we didn't want to add that into our game. And fireflies are sadly no longer part of the plans for the wild update. What? So frogs can't eat fireflies, but they can eat magma cubes without a problem. Great logic, Mojang. Mojang, why can't you just remove the ability for frogs to eat fireflies? I think roses should grow in the forest, and each rose should have its own bush variant. Also in the forests, with a rare chance, you can find an abandoned house. It will not have a lot of loot, but it can be repaired or survive one night. Extra update. There are things that I can't put in a separate update, but I would like to see them along with other updates. The feeding trough is a new block you can craft with some planks and fence gates. Nearby animals will flock to the trough to eat the food within. This works just as if a player had fed the animal, and if there's more than 32 animals in a 10 block radius, the animals will eat, but never enter love mode. Armor stands will have arms. You may also give them items and weapons. This isn't a thing by default in Java Edition for some reason. Shift right clicking an armor stand will swap its armor set for whatever armor you're currently wearing. Firework rockets are able to start elytra flying, even if you're not currently in flying. All you have to do is right click a firework rocket and you'll shoot up into the sky. When flying using elytra over a campfire with a hay bale under it, the player will be propelled upwards slightly. Corals can be placed on top of cactus because the moisture within the cactus will keep the coral alive. Double doors open together when right-clicked. Item frames can be dyed. Right-clicking a ladder with another one will place it, allowing you to drop ladders down without risking falling to your death. When on a ladder, looking down will make you slide down the ladder very quickly. Glass now drops shards, crafting them creates a glass block back. The shards act like glowstone dust, in which fortune will let you get more, and silk touch will just drop the block. Breaking grass or crops with a hoe will break a 3x3 of them. A diamond hoe will break a 5x5 instead. Right-clicking a crop will harvest it and replant it. If you have hoe harvesting enabled, you can also harvest a large area at once. Slabs can be recombined into blocks in a shapeless recipe. Sponges can be placed directly onto water without needing to place them on the side of a block. Holding an emerald block causes nearby villagers to follow the player, much like animals do for food items. Stone tools can be crafted with any type of stone. Coral can be crafted into the respective dyes. Cookies, paper, and bread can be crafted in a 2x2 crafting grid as a bent recipe. Charcoal can be used as an alternative way to craft black dye. Torches can be used as fuel in a furnace smelting two items each. Rotten flesh and poisonous potatoes can be used in the composter. Apples, golden apples, potatoes, carrots, and beetroots can be crafted into crates. Gold bars are just like iron bars, but with gold. More items will fit in pots. Brick, chiseled brick and pillar variants are available for all types of stone. Rope coils can be crafted using string. This new block can be placed on the bottom face of a block and dropped by right-clicking on the placed rope block. Shift right-clicking or right-clicking with a non-rope item will pull the rope up.
sandstone made of soul sand. Soul sandstone can be turned into stairs, slabs and walls, bookshelves out of all wood types. Chests can be made of all the different wood types. Furnaces crafted from deep slate or blackstone have new textures. Additionally, blackstone furnaces can emit soul fire particles if placed over a block that can light up with soul fire. Vertical slabs should be added to the game as it will double the builder ideas. Finally, add the ability to stack slabs on top of each other. In Minecraft, it is not possible to put a different type of slab on a slab. The addition of this function greatly diversifies the construction. Candles placed and lit on soul sand or soul soil will emit soul flames. Add variations of vanilla mobs. Chicken, cows, pigs, sheeps, zombies and other mobs will differ from each other only in appearance, which will make them less the same and monotonous. Mojang added armor customization in 1.20, but for some reason didn't add it for elytras. Why were they ripped off? Elytra customization would look very nice. I would like spiders to learn to climb walls. It would look natural because all spiders can climb walls in real life. But Mojang said that it would be too scary and they would not do it. Okay, I understand that a lot of children play Minecraft. But Mojang, what do you think about this? Where's this warden motherfucker, huh? That's the warden. Where is he? I'm <laughs> <laughs> making too much noise. I am sneaking. Okay, you know what? I'm just gonna run. No, I'm not! Stop! Minecraft needs to up its age rating. What is this game rated? <laughs> oh my god! It definitely needs to be higher. Uh, the ability to lie down will be possible on one key. You do not need more hatches for this. Winter update. Winter biomes in vanilla Minecraft are pretty empty. They are just cold variations of already existing biomes without bringing in anything new. The only thing that stands out in these biomes is the mountains, which look very beautiful and realistic. The only new mobs are Stray and Polar Bear, which were added as early as update 1.10 in 2016. In a new update, I would like to see new snow. I want it to leave layers of snow when it snows, not just fall to the ground endlessly. We need a block that will always be in the snow. A block of ground covered with snow looks really cool, but the problem is that if you put some object on it, the snow will disappear and you will see green grass, which looks very strange. A snow-covered block will solve this problem. I would also like the snow to pass through objects such as a fence, a gate and others. If the snow lies on the block, then when the block was broken, the snow did not disappear but fell to the ground. And if it falls on the water, the water will freeze. If snow falls on the stairs, then it will also be covered with snow. I would also like the snow to interact with the block so that the snow covers them realistically. As if the snow is not just covering them, but hanging from them. Foliage should be white in winter biomes. Snow-covered foliage would look very realistic. New winter flowers diversify snow-covered forests. In winter biomes, there should be a new block, a snow-covered stone. It will be an analogue of a regular stone, but various blocks can be made from it. Snow blocks can be crafted into snow bricks. Ice can be made into polished ice and have brick variants. Ice sheets are thin sheets of ice made from ice blocks. They behave the exact same as glass panes, but if they are hit by any projectile, they will break. I would also like to see a new effect, freezing. If fired from a bow with the new freeze enchantment, mobs would freeze and take damage. A snowstorm would make survival in Minecraft much more difficult. In a blizzard, visibility is reduced to one chunk and you would have a freezing effect. In order not to freeze, you need to find shelter and warm yourself near a fire or stove. Frost must also be added, the glass will freeze when snow falls. The torch will be able to melt the snow and ice around it. Another cool solution would be to add a separate variation of winter mobs. They would have snow on top, which in turn would make the game more immersive. In the desert, we have husk. It inflicts a hunger effect when he hits you. In winter biomes, there should be its analogue, a frozen zombie like in Minecraft dungeons. 
On impact, it would inflict a frostbite effect for a couple of seconds. During a snowstorm, you could meet a new mob, Yeti. He will be a neutral mob if he is alone. But if he spawns with a hatchling and you get close to them, he will start attacking you while protecting his hatchling. Also in Minecraft, I would like to see a penguin. They would live where polar bears live. Water in snowy biomes is freezing. Ice caves are a kind of caves in Minecraft. As you already understood, they will mainly consist of ice and icicles. Icicles will be analogous to stalactites. They can even be eaten, but the effect of freezing will be adjusted on you. Also three years ago at Minecraft Live 2020, we were offered to vote on new mobs, Ice Logger, Glow Squid, and Moo Bloom. I voted for Ice Logger, but Glow Squid won. Ice Logger is that winter mob that would diversify the world of Minecraft. Iceologers would spawn in mountains and ice spikes and hurl ice clouds at the player and would make these biomes even more challenging. This mob had really great potential, but unfortunately Mob Vote 2020 was rigged by Minecraft Star Dream. He asked his massive fan base to vote for Glow Squids. Redstone Update In the Redstone Update, I suggest adding these things. Pressure plates made with obsidian will only trigger when players walk over them. Dispensers are allowed to place blocks in the world and crops such as wheat seeds or potatoes also count. The chute is a new automation block. Items can be inserted into it via automation, and any items inserted are instantly dropped under it. Chains can now connect blocks together when a piston moves them. The Ender Watcher is a new redstone input block. It emits a redstone signal if a player is looking directly at it. It's crafted with an eye of ender, redstone, and obsidian. Dispensers are now able to place discs into jukeboxes. Pistons are allowed to move chests and furnaces. The randomizer is a new redstone component. When given a redstone signal from the back, it'll randomly enable either the left or right output. Copper pipes are crafted using some copper ingots and glass. As you would expect, they transport items from point A to point B. To get items into a pipe, simply use a hopper, or any other insertion means you may have handy. Biomes and mobs update. If we talk about biomes in Minecraft in general, then Mojang said that they will update each biome. Hello? Um, so it's up to you to decide which biome we update first. They have already updated the mountains where they added a beautiful generation and a new mob, a goat. Swamp biome where they added a new generation, new trees and a new mob, a toad. Tiger, where they added a fire, berries and a new mob, a fox. It remains to update the rest of the biomes that they showed. This is the desert where we saw a new tree, palm and a new mob, meerkat. Badlands where you can see a new cactus and a new mob, a hawk. So the Mojang still want to add birds, and this makes me happy. Savannah, where you can see a new tree, baobab, and the new mob, ostrich. I also do not understand why the mobs that were in the vote disappear forever. We're gonna let you choose which one of these four Minecraft mobs that will end up in the game. And remember to vote, because the three ones that you don't vote for, they will be gone forever. Why don't they add them all over time? Because of this vote, we have already lost so many good mobs that would improve Minecraft. This is a master place, which body parts look like shields that will be used to defend itself. The hovering inferno spawns with a group of blazes as a random encounter in the nether. The great hunger. This cute looking mob has a huge mouth and a great appetite for enchanting powers. It will open its huge jaw and sink into the ground where it camouflage itself. Any mobs or items that fall into its mouth will be consumed. The monster of the ocean depths. The monster will attack you with its tongue-like tentacle to pull you down and drown you. It spawns in deep waters and uses its large mouth to propel itself forward. You should vote for this mob because the oceans currently don't have that much content and it would make it more exciting when traveling from island to island. Just imagine what would happen if all these mobs were added to the game how many different situations they could bring to Minecraft. Mobs like Moobloom, Ice Logger, Rascal, and Tough Golem will also be forgotten and that makes me sad. If you have watched up to this point, then you liked the video and all I ask is to like and subscribe. I made this video for about two weeks, so I hope it was interesting for you. Some updates I didn't include, like the desert and jungle update because I didn't find enough stuff to make it a full update. Thanks for watching. Bye.